we'll be discussing about the probability distribution this is a one important unit okay here we will be discussing some introduction part what is random experiment sample space random variable and discrete as well as continuous probability distribution formulas we will be discussing over here in this video okay the next video will be solving based problems based on discrete as well as continuous probability distribution so the first point is random experiment so what is random experiment an experiment whose outcome cannot be predicted is called a random experiment that means if i take an example suppose uh, tossing a coin okay so that experiment is random experiment because whose that outcome whatever outcome how many outcomes are there two outcomes either it will be head or tail when you toss a coin there are two possibilities one is head or we can say it is tail head or tail from this two we will get the outcome so two possible outcomes are there so we cannot predict that when you throw a coin it can be head or tail that is not we cannot predict 100% we cannot say that you will get it as head that is not possible that is why it is considered as random experiment the second point is sample space sample space is nothing but the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment is called sample space sample space that means as i discussed tossing a coin will have these two sample spaces two outcomes all possible outcomes when you toss a coin a coin one coin you are tossing that means two possible outcomes is only possible head or you can get it as tail so this is nothing but the sample space so the next point is random variable a real number associated with each and every element of the sample space is called a random variable okay so that is nothing but head or tail as we discussed so possibility is there head or space this is sample space it is associated with uh, normally we use capital x for the random variable okay we can consider two cases for the random variable the first one we can say discrete random variable and next one is continuous random variable discrete and continuous in case of discrete the number of set of random variables continuous okay so the number of set of random variables for discrete will be finite but in case of continuous it will be infinite what is finite the set of random variables okay a continuous will be infinite set of random variables will be infinite therefore we can say that uh, discrete random variable this is a case two cases are there for the random variable one is discrete random variable another one is continuous random variable so guys we'll move on to the discrete probability distribution so let us see let x capital x be the discrete random variable as we have discussed and it is based on the sample space a sample space is given over here all the possible outcomes x1 comma x2 comma whatever outcomes is there and we will de define a function p of xi such that the p of xi will be greater than greater than or equal to zero this is the first condition and whose summation summation of all probabilities will be equal to one always remember probabilities of all the p of xi xi will be any of the values okay so always remember probabilities of summation of all the probabilities will be one so if it is satisfied then we can define a function such that it it will be called as probability density function if it satisfies this condition this is also called as pdf we call it as pdf also okay probability density function this is an important point so whenever it satisfies this condition summation of probabilities is equal to one this is also called as discrete probability distribution okay another name is discrete probability distribution and one more thing if suppose p of capital x which is nothing but the rand discrete random variable is less than or equal to some of the some value x okay some cutoff value then equal to the summation of i is equal to 1 to some value x this is a cutoff value till where it will be there p of x i then we call it as cumulative density function this is an important note cumulative 
density function. So whenever, if you want to find the cumulative density function, then you have to just add all the probabilities. Whatever probability is this defined, this is basically derived from cumulative density function is derived from the probability density function itself. Where in case we have to just calculate, we have to, in order to calculate cumulative density function, we have to just add up all the probabilities, and it has to satisfy one more condition that is given over on the probability density function that is to satisfy this condition. This condition is satisfied, then we can go for cumulative density function. Yes. Okay. So this is the thing you need to remember. Two important nodes are there. This is also called as CDF, and this is PDF. Probability density function. This is cumulative density function. Let us go for the formula for mean, variance, and standard deviation. So mean is denoted by mu. Okay. This is the mean of discrete probability distribution. I am talking, okay, not continuous. It will be the summation of i to zero, uh, i from one to any of the numbers, x i into p of x i, okay. Some x values will be given and some probabilities will be given. You have to multiply this two. We'll see the problems, okay. Then only you can understand this part. So just remember this part x into whatever x value is there respectively what is the probability you have to multiply and add all the quantities you will get the mean. Next thing is variance in order to find variance it's the same like formula i is equal to 1 to any value till n value xi minus mu the whole square into p of xi p of xi xi minus mu what is mu it is the mu, uh, mean value so first of all you have to find mean then only you can go for the variance or one more formula i can give you it's the same thing just the simplification of this i is equal to 1 2 and summation of this x square into p of xi minus mu square it's the same thing okay add all this up then subtract from the mu square just simplification of that formula next one is the standard deviation standard deviation sigma which is equal to under root of v okay that's why we have to find variance whenever they ask the standard deviation then you have to fi find first variance then only you can find the, the standard deviation now as we know about the total probability suppose some of the questions they might ask you to find the value of k some missing value so then you have to directly apply this formula that is nothing but um, sorry i1 to n summation of all the probabilities it, it should be equal to 1 this is one important thing okay so from that you can get the missing values so this is all about what discrete probability distribution one more thing i should tell you whenever you find the probability suppose if you are if you want to find the probability of some x value which is less than or equal to x okay then you have to subtract 1 minus p of x greater than x value suppose if you need to find the probability of less than or equal to 5 so you can directly go for 1 minus p of x p probability of x random variable greater than 5 okay this is all about discrete probability distribution